Welcome again to this third module. This one has been a challenging module for us uh, because we've got to integrate a vast amount of material in a meaningful way for you. And it's going to demand perhaps a bit more from you by way of reading and understanding. We're still on uh, the uh, behavior side of behavior and environment, which is all about how the human brain works. But we'll be looking uh, this time below the level of conscious awareness at some of the brain processes that are important determinants of our behavior, starting with basic processes of perception and moving on to higher order cognitive processes and the abstract concepts that, uh, that they embrace. The brain develops throughout life. Uh, beginning in infancy and childhood, when it's receptive to very rapid learning indeed. Uh, of course, it gets completely rewired then during teenage years to accommodate our adult identity. Then goes on acquiring life experiences until declining and growing a little bit resistant to change as we move into old age. Our brains receive information about the environment through the processes of sensation and perception. The eye, for instance, detects different wavelengths of light that are then processed in the brain's visual cortex to produce our visual perception. Uh, mechanisms of cognition, which include things like attention, memory, uh, learning, language, reasoning, problem solving, uh, decision making, uh, all of these process incoming information to produce our understanding of the environment, our knowledge and beliefs. Motivational and uh, emotional mechanisms, which are a function both of our inherited dispositions and our learning history, interact with cognitive mechanisms uh, to, to give us our preferences, our values and our attitudes. All of these uh, processes and mechanisms are integrated within the brain to direct our behavioural responses to our physical and social environments. And each of us is absolutely unique with our own individual personality, our own unique patterns of thinking and feeling and behaving in our interaction with the environment, our own completely unique set of skills and preferences. And while groups of people uh, share similar tendencies uh, in various ways, and culture imposes a certain commonality on all its members, we must never overlook the reality of individual differences. Now, we cannot even begin uh, to, to examine the complexity of how the brain does all the things it does. That needs an entire course in psychology. Instead, we'll focus on some of the outcomes of its processing, on uh, the knowledge and the beliefs we have in our head, and on uh, particular kinds of beliefs, um, our values and our attitudes, that don't so much tell us or have, uh, represent facts about the world, uh, but rather our beliefs about what is good and what is bad, uh, what we want and what we don't want, and what we ought to do by way of behaviour. We also look at the concept of worldview, which is our set of assumptions about the nature of, the, of physical and social reality. Assumptions that nonetheless constrain what we do and what we believe. Worldview and values in many ways are the culture within us, what we've learned to believe and value in the process of growing up and internalising the culture of a particular society. As individuals, again, uh, we differ in the extent to which we ever examine, let alone challenge, or change our worldview and values. But for all of us, they're a central part of our self-concept, of who we perceive ourselves to be. As such, we defend threats to our worldview and values in much the same way as we defend threats to our physical well-being. You can make someone very, well, anyone really, very, very angry, very, very quickly, if you challenge central aspects of their worldview. <laughs> but we're not here uh, to talk about anger. Instead, um, let's just say we really hope that you enjoy uh, studying this topic. <laughs>